Ten man for the press review with Alison Sargent. Alison, you're starting in Lebanon with calls to protest against the judge uh, leading the investigation into the explosions in at Beirut's port back in 2020. Yeah, these protests are being called for by Hezbollah and their allies. Lorient Lejour writes that the Shiite parties are mobilizing their troops against the judge, Tarek Bitar. They're calling for him to be fired and they accuse him of politicizing the investigation. Now, according to the paper, Hezbollah's attitude raises a lot of questions. Lorient Lejour says it might just be that Hezbollah is defending its Shiite allies who have already been implicated in this case. Or, the paper says, it's a sign that, that members of Hezbollah are themselves implicated and that they want to push the judge out before he can press charges against them. The paper cites sources close to Hezbollah who say that the judge plans to implicate three members of the party and to accuse one of them in particular of playing a major role in the Beirut explosions uh, by bringing the ammonium nitrate to the port in the first place to create explosives. Now, this whole conflict risks tearing Lebanon's new government apart. Yeah, they've been in office for barely a month. Uh, now the conflict is pushing Lebanon's government towards implosion. That's the headline here from Arabic-language Lebanese paper Anahar, uh, translated by our Arabic-speaking press reviewer. Uh, Hezbollah ministers are threatening to step down unless the judge is fired but so far, the other parties are not allowing that to happen. They are calling for rival demonstrations today in support of the judge. And you're moving to the African continent next, uh, and specifically to talk about Mali, where the French paper Le Figaro is looking at Russia's push for influence there. Yeah, this comes as French troops are partially withdrawing from Mali. Le Figaro's headline here is How Putin Pushes His Mercenaries in Africa. The paper writes that after Syria, Libya, and the Central African Republic, Mali is the latest country where Russia hopes to place mercenary fighters from the Wagner Group. Now, European countries are staunch against this. Le Figaro writes that it's a red line for France in particular, which sees it as a threat to its relationship with Mali, its former colony. And in its editorial, Le Figaro writes that France has every right to oppose the presence of Russian mercenaries, in part because the paper points out that with France providing financial support for Mali, uh, France would essentially be indirect, indirectly paying these Russian fighters. And But you're, you're saying that Mali may have another way of financing these mercenaries, which could ruffle feathers here in Paris even more. Yeah, according to an Algerian investigative website, Algeria is actually uh, wanting to help finance part of Mali's security deal with Wagner. Mali and Algeria are both former French colonies. They share an over 1,300-kilometer desert border. This website, Algérie Par, writes that sources close to the Algerian military say that Algeria is in talks with Mali and is ready to finance between 50 and 70 percent uh, of the Wagner deal. Now, these sources also say that this three-way partnership between Russia, Mali, and Algeria uh, is one of the issues that's actually feeding the current tension between France and Algeria. It is important to note, though, that when faced with these accusations and reports that the, that the Algerian government uh, denies having any involvement in Mali's uh, negotiations with Russian Russia's Wagner mercenaries. Switching gears now, and Paris is, of course, whole hosting the Olympics in 2024. And uh, on Thursday, Emmanuel Macron is touring the city's future Olympic village. That's right. And for the occasion, there is a fun photoshopped photo of the French president on the front page of Libération <laughs> today. Uh, their headline here is, Athletes respond to Macron for gold. We need silver, or rather, we need more money. Uh, the paper explains that Macron has been critical of the French team for not winning more gold medals in the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, this really ruffled the feathers of French athletes who say, that they're not being given enough funding by the French government. Wow. Now, finally from you, Alison, um, a couple who was checking in for a flight to Vegas was surprised to learn their bag was overweight. Tell us what well, they was were, in their they bag. They were even more surprised, Alano, when they saw what was inside of the bag. <laughs> it was their five-pound pet chihuahua. Uh, this little dog named Icky had stowed away inside a pair of the man's cowboy boots. You can see him there uh, in the photo on the right, inside yeah, of the boot. Before you leave, the couple, you say bye. 
tied well, to your dog. You would you think give that the like... couple has multiple children and multiple pets, and so they say that they have a chaotic household, which is part of the reason. Uh, the other reason they said is that the dog, Icky, likes to burrow and has a habit of hiding in laundry. It is a rescue dog. Uh, they think that she snuck into the boot right before the suitcase was zipped up and then was very quiet. Uh, the Washington Post calls this the first time in history that people have had a reason to applaud checked baggage fees uh, because if it weren't for that, the couple um, might have kept the dog in the bag, which could have been fatal for the dog. Instead, though, a family member rushed to the airport to pick the dog up and take it home, and the couple says that they flew on to Vegas and ended up winning a bit of money, and they think that finding Icky in their suitcase was the lucky omen. You know, the dog is so small, they could have just taken the dog on the flight. He's so cute. Well, they didn't even want to take the dog. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Uh, Alison, thank you very much for that. Alison, a sergeant there with the press review. And you can check other editions on our website. The address is france24.com.